Hi everyone. I hope everyone is safe at your end. So uh, due to this uh, pandemic, so I know many of the students are facing the technical difficulty relating uh, in understanding the concepts of uh, the topics. So today I am making a video in order to help you in the preparation relating to uh, property plant and equipment AS10. So relating to the cost component of PPE. In uh, property plants and equipment, we have the four parts in the standard media funds. One is capitalization of an asset and second one is depreciation and third one is revaluation of assets and liabilities and fourth one is derecognition of property plant and equipment. So out of this, we are today covering the first component as a part of first component recognition of PPE. Initially, asset has to be recognized at cost. So to recognize whether it's an asset or not, first we should ensure whether it's an asset for the purpose of AS10, that is a PPE or not. So to become asset as per AS10, so it has to satisfy or it has to underwent two conditions. Number one, it should be a primary criteria. It should be an asset used in production or supply of goods or service or used for rental or used for administrative purpose. And the second condition, it is should be having economic life is more than 12 months. If it is there, then it will be called as property plant and equipment for the purpose of AS10. Then when you lock whether it is asset or not, thereafter, whether should I need to capitalize in a books of accounts or not? Should I need to recognize or not? So for that further, second two current conditions you have to lock. That first condition is cost should be measured reliably and there should be economic benefit derived from such asset. If these two conditions are satisfied, then you can lock it as an asset. Yeah, you are enjoying with my class of CA Moli Nagaraj classes and your faculty, CA Moli Nagaraj, faculty for accounts. Let's continue, enjoy. <coughs> in a cost component, so in a second criteria, cost should be measured reliably. This cost means what? So because at the time of uh, recognizing the cost, so what component to be included or what not to be included, whether whatever I paid from the pocket, is it the cost or not? So should I need to take any other components along with that cost, etc.? So that's what we are going to discuss in this today's video. Cost of PPE includes, my dear friends, cost of includes, cost of PPE includes the four components and excludes five components. Number one, cost includes cost of purchase. Cost of purchase, directly attributable cost. Directly attributable cost means from the point of purchase of an asset till you install the asset and till the trial run expense, till you get the sample production, till that time what the cost you have incurred, everything will be called as directly attributable cost. So for example, transportation charges of bringing, loading, unloading, wages for installation, buying commission, testing charges, installation, erections, etc. All put together is a directly attributable cost. Then decommission cost of old asset. Suppose in the place where you are going to install the new asset, their already existing asset is there. That asset you have to decommission. There is a dismantle. So for that cost, what you have incurred, such cost can be included. If it is uh, in day S16, final students, those who are referring this video. So for them, additionally, PV of estimated cost of decommission will come. It is there in old syllabus also, but uh, uh, in academically at final level, we will uh, ask a questions based on inclusions of this PV of estimated decommission of new asset at the end of its useful life. So that is PV of estimated decommission cost of uh, decommission cost at the end of its useful life means my friends, the new asset which you are going to install today, that's which you are purchasing today after its expiry of its useful life, this asset is expected to decommission. This asset is going to decommission. So that cost of decommission in estimated uh, cost of that day in a today's price, if you discount it. So and such cost, if you capitalize along with today's asset cost, such cost, what we call it as estimated decommission cost of uh, in present value. Next, what cost not to be included? So that is in exclusions list. Number one, abnormal cost of asset. That is uh, material labor overhead which you have used that should not be capitalized. Second one, general overheads such as selling and distribution, administrative expenses not to be capitalized along with the cost of an asset. Third one, inaugural cost. Fourth, cost of change in a product line. And fifth one, temporary shifting charges, including staff training. This costs not to be included in the cost of asset. So uh, based on this component, so, so at IPCs level, 
foundation level as well as in a final level majority of the questions are asking relating to this chart my dear friends what to be included and what not to be included based on this let us go and uh, let us check out our testing knowledge based on few problems which we have taken from ICI material itself so in India's uh, India's the cost components also same whether it is a old accounting standard AS 10 in there also it is the same so therefore this video is useful for uh, both CA final CA intermediate as well as CA foundation as well as those who are referring other professional course related to the valuation of an asset for them also initial recognition criteria is same for the asset recognition yeah now so problem this problem has been taken from uh, CA final material X limited started construction on a building for its own use on 1st April 2018 the following costs are incurred so purchase price of land so since it is a purchase price of land very much it is a capital expenditure therefore I can include in the cost of asset so therefore I can include I can include plus I can include plus then stamp duty and legal fees yes absolutely it is a part and parcel of directly attributable cost therefore I can include Next, architect fee design building construction is yes, it is a pre-construction pre charges. Therefore, I can add include. Next, architect fees yes included. Site preparation yes, that's also directly attributable cost can be included. Materials construction materials. Therefore, I can add it. Direct labor cost that also specifically it has been used for construction. So therefore, so general overheads. Next one. So general overheads it is not to be included because general overheads are. Uh, specifically excludes in a exclusion list of cost other relevant information material costing rupees 1 lakh material costing rupees 1 lakh had been spoiled since it is a spoiled means this material cost is abnormal abnormal so therefore wasted therefore wasted so therefore this 1 lakh rupees material is abnormal so therefore out of the material cost what we have written here plus 1 10 lakh is there out of that 1 lakh rupees material cost not to be included so therefore only 9 lakh we have to include because abnormal cost not to be included in the cost of asset next continue reading and further 1 lakh 50 thousand spent was uh, was spent on account of a faulty design work so now because this also if that uh, whatever the material we have wasted if that was not wasted that 1 lakh also would have been saved and this additional further 1 lakh 50 thousand which we have spent on the faulty design work this material also would have been saved so therefore this is also abnormal so therefore this also i have to deduct from the material cost so therefore in total it is not 1 lakh it is uh, it is in total 1 lakh plus 1 lakh 50 total 2 lakh 50 thousand is the abnormal material so therefore 7 lakh 50 thousand is the material cost next as a result of this problem work on a building was stopped for two weeks during november 2018 during November 2018 and it's estimated that 22,000 of further labor cost related to this period so that means this 22,000 because of that waste materials has been used because of that work was stopped so therefore if that material fault design if would have not occurred this labor cost also would have been avoided so therefore this is abnormal labor cost abnormal so therefore this abnormal labor cost also not to be included in a cost of an asset so therefore in a direct labor cost so what if 4 lakh is there out of that 22,000 rupees not to be included in a cost so therefore this is 3 lakh 78,000 will be the cost next the building was completed on January 1st 2019 so therefore building was started on when building was started on 1st April 2018 so therefore 1st April 2018 so if it is a timeline 1 4 2018 is the building started and it was completed on 1st January 2019 1 1 19 it has been completed so our year end was 31st March 19 yeah so therefore from the date of construction till date of completion this period is called as qualifying period suppose if i have taken a loan as per borrowing cost a16 let us read further 
and bought into use on 1st April. Once asset is ready, stop capitalization. So therefore, put into use is separate. X Limited had taken a loan of 40 lakh. This is for why they have defined the date of completion. So 40 lakh, there was a loan on 1st April 2018 itself for construction of building, which meets the definition of qualifying asset. The loan carried in interest rate 8% per annum and is repayable on April 1st, 2020. April 1st, 2020. Okay. So, but for us, whether it is to be capitalized, interest cost to be capitalized or not, that we have to calculate. So, therefore, loan outstanding was 40 lakh into percentage is 8% into. So, this uh, 142 date of completion, this nine month is the qualifying period. For that nine months, interest should be calculated. 40 lakh into 8% into 9 by 12. You will get into 9 by 12. You will get. 2,40,000 is your amount to be capitalized, interest cost to be capitalized, 2,40,000. So now they are asking, so calculate the cost of building that will be included in tangible non-current asset as an addition. Now, so look out the cost. Purchase as price completely, 30 lakh. Stamp duty and legal fee completely, 2 lakh. Architect fee complete, 2 lakh. Site preparation, 50,000. Materials cost. So this 250,000 includes 1 lakh uh, uh, 1 lakh materials plus further 1 lakh 50,000 which has been which could have been avoided. If that material would have been not wasted, further 1 lakh 50,000 would have been avoided. Therefore, total 2 lakh 50,000 material cost is uh, abnormal waste. Then direct labor 4 lakh minus 22,000, 3 lakh 78. General overheads not to be considered. Therefore, nil and interest cost to 2 lakh 40,000 in total. 48 lakh 18,000 is the cost of an asset to be capitalized. So this problem, this completely working has been done based on the chart which we have discussed. <coughs> yeah, so if you have any doubts relating to this explanation, you can leave it the comment to the video so that uh, I will respond to your comments. Next, let us go to the another one uh, problem. Another one problem. Yeah, on April 1st, 2018, this problem is also have taken from CA final material. <clears throat> on 1st April 2018, XYZ Limited acquired a machine under the following terms. List price of machine, it is a 80 lakh. So therefore, list price, list price means it is the, the wholesale price what they have given. Let us keep it for a while, 80 lakh. Import duty, 5 lakh. So therefore, list price also to be included as a purchase price, 5 lakh import duty that also as a part of if it is a not allowed to refund, if it is taken as a, a input credit, then it has it has to be added to the cost of an asset. Delivery fees, yes, it has added to the cost of an asset, directly attributable cost. Electrical installation, yes, directly attributable cost. Pre-production testing, yes, they only said it's a pre-production, therefore it is very much included in the cost of an asset because till trial run, the expenditure what we have incurred everything is a uh, pre-production and directly attributable cost it has it will form part of our cost of asset next purchase of uh, five year annual main five year uh, maintenance contract to a vendor so therefore this is maintenance contract it is not the capital expenditure it is a revenue so that is out of seven lakh it is a five years seven lakh divided by five years you do it so uh, now you are paying that in advance for the five year so therefore that seven lakh you have to treat it as like a prepaid expense prepaid maintenance charges every year it has to be written off it is not capital expenditure because it is annual maintenance charges rest of other things yeah you can capitalize you can capitalize rest of other things in addition to the above information uh, xyz limited was granted a trade discount of 10 percent on initial list price 10%. So therefore, whatever 8 lakh is there out of that minus 10%, 10% which amounts to 8 lakhs, which is 72 lakhs is the price. Then, and, and on the asset, on the initial list price of the asset and a settlement discount of 5% if payment of the payment for the machine was received within one month of purchase. XYZ Limited paid uh, paid for the plant on 20th April at what cost the asset should be recognized. 
Now look out, asset was purchased on 1st April but paid on 20th. So therefore, they are eligible for uh, a cash discount but cash discount is a financial arrangement. It is no way connected to the cost of an asset. If you pay early, you will get the discount. That is like a discount received indirect income in p &L will come. So therefore, only cash discount out of list price, whatever is there, uh, trade discount can be deducted. Cash discount is a financial arrangement that will not form part of your cost of uh, asset capitalization that has to be credited to the uh, p and l as a discount received so therefore here so the net cost is so seven lakh is annual maintenance charges that will be prepaid except uh, in a list price 80 uh, so 8 lakh 10 percent has to be deducted as a, as a uh, trade discount except that all uh, all other components we have to capitalize so therefore answer look out list price 80 lakh minus 8 lakh so net is 72 plus import duty incomplete delivery fees is incomplete elect elect uh, electrical installations incomplete 10 lakh pre-production testing 4 lakh so that annual maintenance charges 7 lakh annual maintenance charges 7 lakh should be treated as a prepaid expense and it will be charged out charged off to p and l over the years over the years so that is 72 lakh so then whatever that 30, 72 lakh the price what we have purchased into into 5% the trade discount 360000 will be credited to p and l as a income so this is uh, relating to the chart there's a cost components what we have discussed since in uh, ipcc and uh, foundation metal adequate the quality problems are not there but concept is same whether it's a as10 or india as 16 property plant and equipment both concepts are cost component uh, cost components of pp concept is same but quality problem was there in final so therefore i have picked up this and uh, very much you can expect for your examination at all three levels yeah next let us move on to the uh, next one more extension of this uh, uh, cost component problem. So you always uh, don't purchase new asset. So if you are purchasing the asset means asset can be either new asset or old asset or uh, sometimes on existing assets itself we will incur the capital expenditure. If we incur on existing asset when it is called as capital expenditure that means can I add to the existing cost of an asset or not. So this part we have to discuss. Now, if you are purchasing whether it's a new asset, what put together is a cost, what not to be included. If it is a second and old asset, if you are purchasing in your hand might be new, but it is already used asset. Or sometimes on existing asset, you will incur some capital expenditure when it is called as capital expenditure. That is when we can add to the cost of an asset. That's what we are going to discuss in next component, next chart. So here, if it is capital expenditure, if you are purchasing new asset, if you are purchasing new asset means so that what we discussed in a previous chart cost to be included and not to be included which holds good as it is that is cost of purchase directly attributable cost and uh, uh, decommission cost of old asset and PBF estimated decommission cost of uh, new asset at the end of its estimated useful life. These are the cost components to be included and excludes are five components which we have said like abnormal cost uh, selling and distribution general overheads etc etc those to be excluded this is very much applicable for new asset and same thing is applicable for old asset also even old asset you would have purchased from someone purchase cost of purchase will come so from that place you have to bring to your location and you have to install and you have to uh, trial run those uh, machine till trial run uh, is complete so the cost what you have called is directly attributable cost that you have to capitalize and decommission cost of uh, old asset suppose in uh, where you are purchasing the second hand asset what you have purchased newly in that place old asset suppose if it is a, that cost that uh, removal cost also you have to include very much it is the same as uh, new asset and cost excludes whatever the components are there very much same but here if you purchase a new, uh, old uh, second hand asset in that player now in the cost of directly attributable cost you are supposed to incur uh, three are the additional components number one is first time repairs because you have purchased second hand machine before put into production sometimes you may bound to repair the asset so therefore that repair cost you have to capitalize first time repairs for the second hand asset will be capital in nature so therefore you have to capitalize to the asset you have to add to the cost of an asset then overalling expense and uh, third one is expenses to clear the title of the asset defects in the title of the asset so that means expenses suppose you purchase the asset 
sometimes suppose for example you have purchased the building so father has sold the building but uh, the related parties like son or whomsoever spouse of uh, that party might uh, file the petition against that sale consideration or the title so it is not without their consideration the property has been sold as some litigation problem so now to clear that defects in the title you might have incurred some legal charges lawyer fees etc etc so those charges also will be called as directly attributable cost very much it has to be capitalized this is in case of uh, second and asset suppose if you have incurred the capital expenditure on existing asset existing asset means already maybe machinery is there on machinery uh, it was five year old machinery after some five years you have uh, uh, one part has been worn out now you bound to replace that uh, component so now because of uh, uh, that you may you have incurred some two lakh three lakh some what amount and you replace the existing a component that's a old component in the machine and you replace with a new component because of that uh, your production whatever earlier example 100 units was giving per uh, uh, per hour now it was a sustained for example so that means now you have incurred that cost of new component which i have replaced in that case whether that uh, additional cost which i have incurred some amount some two lakh or three lakh what i have incurred newly can i add it to the existing wdv of the asset or not yeah so that for that it's a third part if you have incurred the cost incurred the capital expenditure on the existing asset my dear friend on account of that additional expenditure if existing capacity or performance or existing life that is the original life what you have assessed if that life is increased then only you can capitalize yeah only in the two condition one is original capacity or performance which was there because of this expenditure if that original capacity or performance if it is increased or original life what you have estimated so that life if it is increased then only uh, for existing asset the capital expenditure that is the expenditure what you have incurred you can add to the uh, asset otherwise you have to charge to p and l you have to charge to p and l but here one important thing you have to uh, find the component of uh, the old component in the original asset has to be removed in that place new component you are attaching or uh, new component you are replacing so therefore while removing that old component whatever the wd of old component is there that you have to de-recognize at any cost de-recognize at any cost from the original wdv of the asset for the wdv new component wdv you have to add provided if these two conditions are satisfied otherwise the new component uh, new component cost what you have incurred that should be charge of to p and l as a expense yeah so relating to this component let us uh, see a problem yeah see see the illustration a limited has carried out certain works on various machines in their engineering plant which manufactures high quality of metal patterns and templates for use in industry determine in each case whether cost of improvement cost of improvements improvements can be added to the existing carrying value of the asset concern carrying value means wdv carrying value means in a india's language we call it as wdv so those who are uh, final students those who are viewing so for them carrying amount means it is wdv because in uh, india's 36 in a impairment loss and employee benefits this and all it's a very much very much is a familiar word for you people so now cost of improvements improvements means it is additional expenditure what what i have incurred that can i add to the existing wdb of the asset or not so for that purpose <coughs> now first situation the cost of annual machine overhaul so here the annual machine overall which will maintain the originally assessed standard performance of the machine for the coming 12 month so therefore this is annual overall means it is like maintenance cost yeah so because of this the originally assessed capacity or performance will not be inc uh, increased or like cannot be increased so therefore this is cannot be uh, this cannot be added to the cost of an asset so this is nothing but revenue expenditure therefore i can't add this is i can't add second situation the cost of repairs to a pressing machine which was damaged by the emergency service while trying to extricate the arm of the worker who had been trapped in the press 
yeah so i don't know whether you have aware or not in the manufacturing units they used to they use uh, the 80 ton process hydraulic process a lot of uh, pressing machines they will use out of that uh, where their uh, one labor who is working nearby so somewhat his arm was stuck in the machine so now in order to uh, extricate the machine was suddenly stopped and thereafter in order to extricate uh, his arm from the machine so machine was damaged so now that mission was damaged now the question is the cost of repair to that mission what we have incurred should i need to add to the cost of an asset or not correct huh? now look out because of the capacity performance that is not the matter but here it is like abnormal abnormal condition in abnormal situation we have damaged it suppose if you don't repair the damage your asset value will be drastically eroded so that means it will occur impairment loss in order to avoid that impairment loss this repairs it is a deemed that you have to incur so therefore that cost will form part of your capital expenditure because it is abnormal condition it is capital expenditure therefore yes to save impairment loss therefore you have to capitalize next third one modifications to a cutting machine which will increase its rate of output from 500 unit to 560 uh, patterns so that itself is sufficient the output has been increased that is the performance has been capacity has been increased therefore this is capital expenditure yes i have to add to the capital expenditure so modifications to lathe fourth one modification of the lathe, lathe which will replace the current water cooling system with an oil based system thereby extended i repeat thereby extended the life of the lathe by forecast forecast means estimate estimated life what i estimated the original life because of this expenditure now the life was extended by two years therefore original life is increased therefore here yes it is a capital expenditure i have to add it to the existing cost of asset next fifth one the upgrading of a cutting machine with new software which will improve the accuracy which will improve the accuracy that accuracy that itself is sufficient since accuracy is increased performance is increased therefore yes it is a capital expenditure yes it's a capital expenditure next question number six alteration to the production line which will allow automatic feeding from a machine to the next one in a production process thereby removing the need of employee to manual load to the second machine was removed yeah so because of this what happened earlier the human so from machine one he used to take the output and he has to load in uh, machine two now that was automated so because of that what happens human lag whatever the time delay was there that would have been avoided now performance capacity will increase so therefore this will increase the uh, surely this will increase the production capacity so therefore it will be capital expenditure yes you can add yes you can add to the capital expenditure yeah so relating to this uh, question and whatever be the situations if you have any doubts so you can leave me in a comment or comment to the video so that i will reply for your comments comments i will re, i will respond for your comments so this is a solution for that situations yeah so i will end my video relating to this uh, cost concepts i hope this video will uh, uh, give you some insights relating to the uh, cost components of ppe now my upcoming uh, batches for ca foundation uh, starts at sampath academy from may 25th so those who are interested or those your neighbors or those who are known parties those who are uh, planning to join for classes you can suggest my classes and for intermediate advanced accounting classes are going to start in uh, <coughs> start from july 5th and for ca final financial reporting is going to start from june 5th completely everything is online classes live classes the interaction will be there for the students it's, it will be like face to face uh, classes but it will be virtual so that online in a real time you can uh, clarify your doubts and all so my schedule you will be uh, you you can access in my fb my fb is cm rule nagraj so you can you can find me or you can call you can uh, contact me at 8147000846 846 for registration and you will get the quality assured classes which will be live classes so you won't be regretted so thank you so let us meet you all in upcoming videos in a new different concepts so it will be help for your preparation so signing off cm modi from bangalore bye